The Canterbury Tales are a series of tales written or composed by Geoffrey Chaucer, a Londoner, at the end of the 14th century, recounting the ways that pilgrims, a group of pilgrims, travelled to the shrine of Thomas Becket at Canterbury, all the way from London, on horseback, and to entertain themselves, regaled their fellow travellers with different tales. What would they have done at Canterbury? Well, they would have gone to the shrine of St. Thomas. Probably they would have come away with some holy water in an ampulla, like the one exhibited here in the exhibition. They would have brought away a badge or some kind of symbol of their pilgrimage, like this badge of Thomas Becket. And of course, uh, what would they have left there? Well, probably a piece of money, like this noble of Henry VI that comes from Bardsey Island in North Wales, which was itself a very popular pilgrimage centre to hear for Welsh travellers. The real reason why, of course, we have this exhibition at the National Library is the presence here of one of the library's greatest treasures, the Hingurt Manuscript of the Canterbury Tales, believed by scholars to be the earliest manuscript. Although, when you put it side by side with the Ellesmere Chaucer facsimile, the Ellesmere Chaucer being in San Marino in California at the Huntington Library, you see that they are rather different, although they are also similar. They're in the same handwriting. The handwriting has recently been identified as that of Adam Pinkhurst, a scribe working in London and working under the direction of Geoffrey Chaucer himself. This is a first generation manuscript written close to 1400, the date of the death of Chaucer himself. Therefore, we are very, very close to the author, although the manuscripts are rather different. The Ellesmere manuscript, highly decorated, and the Hengut Chaucer, rather less so, but both open to show the beginning of the tale of the wife of Bath. Other manuscripts in the exhibition include the Boes, Chaucer's translation into English of Boethius, this popular Latin work, also in this instance in the hand of Adam Pinkers, the scribe of the Hengo to Chaucer. Also we have the Mercer fragment containing parts of one tale only, the nun's priest tales of the Canterbury Tales, which dates from the early 15th century only a fragment remaining of that particular manuscript. And jumping the centuries, as it were, to Troilus and Crusade, um, or Troilus a Chrysid, the adaptation in the hand of John Jones of Gethi Lovedy in the early 17th century of another of George Geoffrey Chaucer's popular works, showing two things, how Chaucer um, was not only responsible for the Canterbury Tales, but uh, also wrote other works, um, and also the popularity of his works over the succeeding centuries. With the advent of technology in the late 15th century, uh, the works of Geoffrey Chaucer was one of the first to be printed in English. Here we have one page only from the Clerk of Oxenford's tale, uh, printed by Caxton in London in 1484. And of course, as the the works of Geoffrey Chaucer have never been out of print. We have the Stowe edition of 1561. Notice how they try and replicate the manuscript tradition. They don't want to scare people by going off into um, some modern newfangled technology, but they're almost replicating the manuscript tradition. Ending up with the great and beautiful Uri edition of 1721, which of course was absolutely full of mistakes, but which is a very beautiful printed edition. And then the highlight of the exhibition, right at the end of our case display, the Kelmscott Chaucer of 1896, the grand output of the Kelmscott Press under the direction of William Morris, attempting once again to replicate the manuscript tradition in its finery, a beautiful, if rather over-the-top, production.
In this exhibition, we are concentrating on two characters in particular from the Canterbury Tales, the pardoner and the wife of Bass. Now, the pardoner, of course, is attempting to, to tell a moralistic story against greed, although he himself epitomizes greed. In this case, we have an indulgence from Strata Marcella Abbey, printed in 1528, the kind of material that the pardoner would have sold in order to obtain for his purchases some respite from purgatory. Also, we have a crucifix from the National Museum, uh, of the, again, of the kind of ware that he would have been selling to possibly gullible people around the countryside. His tale is against greed, and the tile shows a young man from the era of David Apguilin from Strata, Florida, around 1340, looking vainly into a mirror, the very thing that the partner would have advised him against. One of the most remarkable characters in the Canterbury Tales, of course, is the wife of Bass, and um, the manuscripts are open to show the beginning of her tales, and we have one or two items that would have been associated with her. She was a successful businesswoman, uh, a cloth importer. We have a piece of, of cloth from the medieval period. She was also married five times, and uh, had survived those marriages in their different guises, and we have a beautiful gold ring from Iweni to symbolize those marriages. She would have been married five times. She would have had five rings. And what you wanted was, of course, gold rings as opposed to rings made of rushes, the kind of material that would, as in the case of the marriage, probably disintegrate with time. We tend to think of the National Library of Wales as being a repository for treasures in the Welsh language, the Black Book of Kamala and the White Book of Hedderch and Mabinogi and so on. We also have treasures in many other languages, and in a way the Hengud Chaucer epitomises the greatest treasure of all in the English language. Who would have thought that one of the greatest treasures, productions of English literature is here at Aberystwyth. Our exhibition tries to place that particular treasure in context, giving us a glimpse on a medieval world and on the characters that inhabited it.